Hi everybody, I'm Hal Weeks for Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. We are going to be doing a series about uh, auto harp and auto harp related cousins, brothers, sisters, auto harp relatives that came out at the same time in history that the auto harp came out. And there are a number of these that are still around. They're not manufactured anymore, but there are still good examples floating around to be had, to be gotten, and we have gotten them. And so we have them here in the shop, and I've pulled them out and fixed them up, tuned them up as much as I can so that I can show them to you. But first, I wanted to discuss what is a zither versus what is a harp. And so this introductory video is going to talk about that. And then over the subsequent seven or eight weeks, we are going to be showing you all these different auto harp relatives. So I'm really excited about it. Let's get into it now, shall we? Hi, this is Hal Weeks for Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. Welcome to this show. What is an auto harp? Well, an auto harp is a musical instrument. Okay, class closed. Now, an auto harp is a chordophone. And in the family of chordophones, it is a zither. And in the family of zithers, it is a corded zither. Let's back up, shall we? There are five classes of musical instruments in the world. Let's see if I can name them. Aerophones, chordophones, idiophones, membranophones, and electrophones. And it all has to do with how do they make sound. So, aerophones are wind instruments. And of course there are subclasses that go on down from that. There are chordophones, string instruments. Idiophones are percussion instruments that don't have a skin or a drum head. Those instead are membranophones. Those are percussion instruments that do have a skin, like any kind of drum is a membranophone. And then there's electrophones, things like synthesizers. Um, and those have only come upon us in the past hundred years. So, which of those classes does the auto harp fall into? Chordophones, of course. In the subclasses of chordophones, there are lots of different variants, but zither, is a family of instruments that goes back way into antiquity, as do harps. Um, but an auto harp, regardless of its name, is not a harp. It's a zither. It's a subclass of the family of zithers. Let's look at a very basic zither. This is actually an auto harp without its chords. It's never had chords on it never had chord bars. So this is a strict, very formal, it's a zither. A zither is a chordophone where the strings run parallel to the soundboard and each string is responsible for one note and one note only. That's the only note that that string makes. This is a zither. This instrument is ancient and it comes in probably thousands of forms across the world and every world culture has its zithers. Let me show you another one. This instrument is a psaltery. The psaltery is an ancient, ancient instrument and the psaltery is 
either bowed or plucked, but it has the strings. They run parallel to the soundboard. Each string is responsible for only one note. This psaltery is a bowed psaltery. Here's the little bow that goes with it. And if you look, you will see along this side a pattern of two, excuse me, three, two, three, two, just like the black notes on a piano. And the bow So this side makes the pentatonic scale, just like the black notes of a piano do. And the other side is the diatonic scale. Let's see if I can actually play you a tune. I'm not a, an accomplished psalterist. Psalterist? So, the psaltery is a zither in its morphology, so it belongs to the zither family. The auto harp is a zither. Its subclass is corded zithers. Back around the turn of the century, between the uh, 1800s and 1900s, there was a big movement all through the industrial world of um, things that seemed futuristic. It's futuristic. Now we call that steampunk. That is the term that was coined recently for things of that era um, that were very sort of futuristic, um, that belonged to the Victorian era. And um, they were trying to be futuristic by coming up with automatic music. All of a sudden, everybody was going to work in the factories, and the world was becoming automated. First, I guess, steam power, the trains. The world was opening up through technology, and music needed to keep up because as people were going to work, they had less time to master a musical instrument at home. And so various answers to that came up, uh, came out. For example, that's when the phonograph came out. You don't even have to play music at home anymore. You can just drop the needle. Um, the radio came out of that same movement um, for the technological replacement of making music at home, but also these devices to make music easier. The player piano. There's a technological um, steampunk revolution for you, a futuristic music by itself, automated music. The um, um, melodeon, uh, which was various devices that worked in the same way that uh, the player piano did, but it had various devices in it, like drums and horns and, uh, you know, music box type things um, to create automated music. And the auto harp belonged right in with this because it was something where you could push a button and strum a chord and make some simple music in a very short time you could be doing this at home, after work, in the evenings with your family. And uh, that's the, the period 
that the auto harp came out of, the corded zithers. The zither is not a harp, and the harp is not a zither. We already looked at the morphology of the zither with the parallel soundboard and the separate strings. Let's look at a harp and see what the difference is. So the harp also has one string per note. Just like the zither. So what's the difference? The difference is that the soundboard does not run parallel to the strings. The soundboard on a harp, I have to adjust my camera here so that you can see this. Here's the soundboard to the harp and the sound box. The soundboard on a harp family instrument is perpendicular to the strings. This is the soundboard, and it's at a 90 degree angle to the strings. So that's the difference in the morphology between the harp family of chordophones and the zither family of chordophones. Now, here at the shop, we have a good number of historic corded zithers, and we're going to share them with you. Pete's going to come in on this process, too, and we're going to show you some of these historic corded zithers. How's that for a tease for you? We're going to have to leave those pieces for other forthcoming weeks because this video is getting too long. We've got about eight different instruments to share with you over the next several weeks. And I'm looking forward to rolling those videos out for you. I'm Hal Weeks. Thanks for watching Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. If you are interested in keeping this program going by becoming a contrib uh, contributor, you can go over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash halweeks and drop a few bucks in the tip jar, and that will help me out immeasurably. Also remember that I teach auto harp to any place in the world via Zoom. Wherever you are in your playing, wherever you are in the world, I can help you with that. So you can go to my website, halweeks.com, and find out all the details about auto harp lessons on the web. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a week. I'm Hal Weeks. Bye-bye.